This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Bingo, we're back on a given Wednesday. Oh, it's Wednesday already. Yeah. The three o'clock block. That is a retired judge, Shackley Raffetto, chief judge of the Second Circuit Court in Maui for a, a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, now he's with us here today. Thank you for coming down, Shackley. Uh, my pleasure. You are so international. You have dedicated your retirement to so many important international things. You are having a fabulous time on this planet. Yeah. And one of them is the, is the Jessup International Law Moot Court Competition in China, no less. And through yes. this, I would like to study with you international law in today's world. Uh, okay. So tell us about Jessup. Well, well, well it's an international program started by, uh, in the name of... Uh, Professor Jessup, who was a Harvard uh, professor uh, many years ago, he was one of the, uh, apparently one of the drafters of the UN Charter. And uh, this competition was founded in his, his name. It's truly international, about 90 countries participate every year. They have competition every year in each nation. Each nation then selects its top teams based upon the number of schools they have participating. In China, it's about six because we had 49 teams from 49 different law schools uh, compete this year. And then they all meet, in, they all have the same problem and it's all in English. So that allows me to go there and participate. And then they have the final international competition in Washington DC about a month later, usually in late March or thereabouts. And it's a re, I've, I've served there as a volunteer judge and also in Russia. And the one in Washington, though, is really nice. They have a lot of international uh, activities for the students. One night, for instance, they have a, uh, a dance, really, for young people. But they all come in their native or traditional costumes. Oh, that costumes. must be something. Yeah, yeah it's, really, it's really something. And of course, these are all really smart young law students from all over the world. And they, make, they begin to make their you know, networking relationships. And I mean, it's a really wonderful program. And I've been going and participating in the China rounds as a volunteer judge for, I think, about eight years now. This year was the 16th annual competition in China, and it was the largest one that we've had so far, uh, 59 law schools. You know, there are about 500 law schools in China, and China has only had law schools since, I guess, the end of the Mao period. Yeah. Uh, because yeah, they must disbanded. be part of China's transition. It's, it's, yes. it's dynamic right now. Yes. More lawyers change the society. Yeah. Interesting, the, the student body, I'd say, is about s at least 70% female. Well, nobody all can complain then. All eh? smart, <laughs> very smart, yeah, and, and hard work and good students. Well, let's unpack some of that. You know, why did Jessup do this in the first place? Uh, he wanted to have, I'm, I'm just putting some of it together, mm -hmm. he wanted to have an international program. Mm -hmm. He wanted this international program to have competition and appellate argument. And international law. And international, international law. law. It's right. direct, directed at international yes, law. Yes, yeah. Every year, um, in fact, uh, the, the person, Peter Tu, I think his name was, he, he wrote the problem this year. And then uh, they write the problem, and then it goes to a committee, and they, they look and see whether it has the right number of issues and so on. And then it goes the same problem, very long, complicated fact situation, raising at least four major uh, constitu or, uh, international law issues, and everybody works on the same. But it is, it's an appellate format. They do a brief, uh, like I, I read and graded 15, uh, they call them memorials in international law. I graded those before I went. And, uh, and then, but w what you're grading at the, at the competition is their oral argument. Sure. You don't necessarily have their brief. Sure. Well, I'm just so many things you can learn going through a program like that. Mm -hmm. It sounds like Jessup was interested in making those students in all the participating countries, and I guess there's a lot of countries, yeah. um, aware of international law, make yes. them a little more facile about international law, and therefore accepting it. Because as we spoke a little while ago, International law, you know, is just generally treated as it, it is what you make of it. Mm -hmm. It's it's hard to say there's any hard law there that everybody will abide by. The only, uh, yeah, the mostly, only hard law is the treaty. Yes, 
Yes, and then, sometimes do not get confirmed. Right, and, and <laughs> unlike the common law system, any decision by the international court is just persuasive. Yeah. And so, and so it's very interesting because you have people from all different legal traditions, civil law, common law, and they're all variations of the, on those themes. So even if they come from a, a, um, uh, a nation that is based on a civil law system, they still have cases and decisions, and, and uh, so they're always addressing the issue of what's persuasive and what isn't and how do you read it and what does it mean. And in Just some, like of the, we do. some of the systems in some of these countries, they don't have a lot of opportunity to stand up and articulate a, a position, to, to advance, to argue uh, a legal position, am I right? Well, they don't have the adversary system. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not an expert on the civil law system, so I, I can't say exactly what it means. But, but in international law, I, I know I've talked to uh, people who are judges on the international courts, and I asked them, what do you do about case precedent? And there's no question that cases mean something, even though they're not binding in the way that we think about them. But even if you think about our system, no case is exactly the same, right? So mm -hmm. you're always distinguishing it or reading it broadly sure. or narrowly and it's all that. It's a story. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and, in a, and uh, my, um, I understand that the legal training in China is mostly memorizing statutory law. And so to come to a, a, a competition where, where it's more uh, oriented towards common law principles of reading a case and interpreting it and citing it as authority, and of course they refer to arbitral, international arbitral decisions and, and treaties and statutes and so on as well. It's, it's a lot of the same thing we do. Yeah, but, but you, have, you have different backgrounds, and the common denominator is, is this program and I wonder what Jessup, or for that matter, you would say about what you wanted to uh, inculcate in, in the student body that participates. Mm -hmm. what, what do you want that law student to think of when he finishes the program? What do you want to give him? Well, I think one thing is we, we want the student to go away understanding what their role is in the process of justice. Uh, I, I mentioned I do an extra day of training with a couple of other lawyers for the teams that are the, the six best teams we do, a, we've developed a program of advocacy. And one of the things I tell them is you're an officer of the court and you're there to help the judge make the right decision. I know that from being a judge, you know, we, <laughs> we, we rely on the lawyers to help us make, make the right decision or the best decision we can under the circumstances. And so the, the students may not have heard that before, you know, that you're important. Your mindset should be a trust, that of a trusted law clerk. And uh, it's not it's because they tend to have a kind of a mechanical approach. They stand up and say, well, issue one is going to take 22 minutes, blah, 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 you know, instead of saying this is a case of the faithless lawyer or, or you know, something yeah. like that, which we do. And I've seen that phrase exactly used in our court system by a well-known <laughs> lawyer here. And, and, I, and I, never, I don't remember what the case was about, but I remember that. That's yes, right. So it's very effective. He's trying to affect your thinking, yeah. Right, see, they don't, they don't know things like that, and so we, we try to t talk to them about that after we've gone through the competition and observed and, yeah. and seen it. And, but, but I'll have to say, they try really hard. And so when you, when you can offer these things to them, they just really absorb it. Why? Why do they try hard? Do they have, they have to do some competition to get into the program or can any law student walk in the door? Well, they have to organize a team and some of the teams don't even have a coach, you know, they, they put it together themselves. And, and these problems are very complicated fact situations, you know, they, who, the people who write these really load them up. And, uh, and, and so they have to figure out what the issues are. They're given um, uh, a basic list of international uh, resources that they can refer to, but they're huge, you know, and these international you, how cases How long is the text? I mean, how many pages is the problem? Uh, 20 pages. Whoa. Single okay. space. I Single mean, space. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they do that on purpose, right, because that's the challenge is sorting out. <laughs> all. And I, I, I told them in the training, look, in real life, you know, you're going to you're gonna have to go figure out what the facts are, and they may not be what your client told you they are. <laughs> and then the you have story, to tell the yeah. story, you know, which is the story and theme of the case, uh, which to, to be most effective is an advocate. So I get the 20 pages. Yeah. Well, let me go back and fix one, one issue. So do I have to take a test? Can I just walk in? If I, if I make my team, can I come and participate? 
do I have to do some stuff to you know get involved in the program? I you know I think some schools actually give them credit for participation. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, but I but I don't know that process that, okay. that happens at the individual schools because I just see them as they come to the competition. Right, and you're a judge there in the competition. Yeah, a volunteer judge. Uh, there's about uh, probably fifty volunteer judges, and about from half all of, over the world. Well, half of them I would say are all over the from all over the world. The, the other half are are Chinese, who many of whom participated as students, and are lawyers in China and various places. So the, one of the things I enjoy is I meet all these very interesting people. One, one fellow I met is, and got to know as a barrister in Hong Kong, an Australian. Did you know that you can go to Hong Kong as a foreigner and become a barrister? Uh, no. Yeah. Well, I want to write that down, yeah. actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you know, that's one of the really interesting aspects of going and serving. Well, you've got to get out. It's really wonderful that you do get out mm -hmm. and the people in this program, at least who come from the U.S., get out mm -hmm. and see what's going on. They see those kids, see the way they think, see the way their yes. thinking changes in the course of the program. I'll so, say some of them are really good, too. They all speak English. Yes. And, Very and articulate. So you give them 20 pages <clears throat> of, of fact pattern, mm -hmm. complicated, international law questions. They have to find the issues, I suppose. Yeah. And I suppose also they have to read the law somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, that means research in, in an international law database. And it means they have to think through their position. Mm -hmm. And they have to come and argue effectively in front of what, a panel of judges like you? Usually it's a panel of three judges, although sometimes it's two if we don't have enough judges. And then the, then the uh, I think the quarterfinals and the semifinals is a panel of five, mm -hmm. and then the final is at, I think five or seven, uh, depending on what. Professor uh, Zhu Wenqi is the is the man in China. He's a senior professor at Renmin University, big, huge university. A, I have some pictures. I don't yeah, know let's we, let's take a moment to look at them. And uh, uh, he runs the program. Does a fabulous job. Yeah. Yep, gonna, okay. We're going, to, we're going to see those pictures in a minute. Okay. But you know, so so these these uh, law students are coming up in front of you. They and, and there are a number of teams. Or is one team facing off against another yes. team? Or yes. And okay. It's, so I mean, it's somebody wins and somebody loses. That's right. Uh, and each in the in the big, except for the last three rounds, the uh, semifinals, quarterfinals, and the finals, uh, each um, each participant gets a grade is is graded by each judge, and then those grades. Uh, will determine who who is recognized as the best oralist, and they have the best brief at the at the final ceremony. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yes. Okay. And it, but but one team does win and one team loses, and so you advance that's right. through the competition. You, that's right. And then at the top at the top of the competition, there's a there's a, a a senior winner, so to speak. Yes. And and where does that senior winner go? Well, the top six teams then have the opportunity to go to Washington D.C. to participate ah, okay. to, to compete in the international yeah. finals. And of course, that the, the I think it's in the quarterfinals that that six are identified. So the competition at that level is is pretty keen. So, so this takes some weeks for you to go through this process. Huh? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, just, you just for, came for, back recently, for them, right? I, I was there, I guess, about, well, it, the actual competition was like four days. So, but a long, long day. It's like in one day, I presided over four different competitions, and everybody else did too. So, it's, it's quite a bit. You're busy. The government of China pays for some of this or part of it? They take of care it? of the expenses and lodging once we get there. And the, for you? And the, yes. And they also. Professor Xu is very good about providing a cultural opportunity. Like we, we one year we, we have the program in Beijing, and then usually another year we'll go someplace else. Next year they talk about going to Xi'an, where the terracotta soldiers are, oh, sure. which I hope happens because we get, get to see all that. And, and does the government trying to pay for the students to come to Washington, or is that... I don't. I think maybe the schools take care of that. Yeah. I don't know. So it sounds like this is popular with the government, popular with the schools, popular with the the legal profession in China. No. Yes, that uh, it's supported financially by several of the big uh, international and also large Chinese law firms. Yeah. So uh, supported, and they come on the last day and are able to be recognized. And of course, I'm sure they are looking at the talent. You know, for for employment purposes. Sure, yeah, and well, they want a better educated 
set of graduates, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> and well, that really is my next question is mm -hmm. why is it popular? Why does the government like it? Why does the profession like it? Why are the students excited about it? What, what's in it for all of those people? Well, I don't know for sure, but uh, I think it's the same reason they promote the English language in their educational system. Is they, <laughs> they want international, worldly, highly educated people. I mean, China, China is operating businesses all over the world and making investments, and they need people to help facilitate that, it's people who are sophisticated. And these, these students are very good, and I'm sure that they you know, that's part of their career path, or, or maybe with the government, I, I don't know. So Many, many I, of them go to, come to the United States for study. I've written a lot of recommendation letters over the years for students. That's, those are the, the master's degrees. I mean, it seems no, like... That, well, the, the master's degrees, but they also have figured out that it's the JD degree that, oh, that wow, has real value. Step. Yeah, yeah, and I've, I've, I've helped, I think, three. Get, go to the JD programs and actually become American lawyers. And, and as I mentioned earlier, you know, a foreign lawyer can go to California now and, t and take the bar exam. And these students who, who get the JD degree, of course, they usually uh, um, take the bar wherever in whatever state they're in. Well, <clears throat> they, they really think global. Yes. Um, and uh, it it's must be something to watch them train up to be, you know, competent mm -hmm. anywhere about international law anyway, and probably other things too. Yes. So they can take the bar in California. And I know, uh, this, uh, I met a, recently a fellow who took the bar in Florida, mm -hmm. a Chinese lawyer, and it must be happening all around the country. And they form law firms. Yes. Uh, Chinese people, Chinese lawyers forming law firms in the United States and mm -hmm. practicing law that way. Uh, and so I, the, what you have is uh, a very, a very mm, a salient global consciousness mm -hmm. and an attempt to influence legally influence things mm -hmm. in all of the continents where they're doing business. And the knowledge to do that, yeah. And the knowledge to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a short break, Shackley. Okay. When we come back, I'd like to see your photos. I'd like to talk about the 20 pages. What's in it? Okay. I'd like to put the kinds of issues that come up. You know? uh, okay. Make me one of your, your competitors. Uh, I could students. tell you some of the facts, yeah. All right, okay. <laughs> okay. Shackley with Federal will be right back with more. <laughs> This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Hello, I'm Helen Dora Hyden, the host of Voice of the Veteran, seen here live every Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. As a fellow veteran and veterans advocate with over 23 years experience serving veterans, active duty, and family members, I hope to educate everyone on benefits and accessibility services by inviting professionals in the field to appear on the show. In addition, I hope to plan on inviting guest veterans to talk about their concerns and possibly offer solutions. As we navigate and work together through issues, we can all benefit. Please join me every Thursday at 1 p.m. for the Voice of the Veteran. Aloha! Okay, this is uh, Think Tech Asia. I'm Jay Fidel. Uh, we are honored by uh, the presence of uh, Shackley Ruffetto. He's a retired chief judge of the Second Circuit Court in Maui. And uh, he is involved for some years now. Eight, did you say eight? Yeah, about eight years. About eight years with the uh, Jessup Appellate uh, Argument uh, Competition. I guess the proper name is the Jessup International Law Moot Court Competition in China. And through that program today, we'd like to learn about China's view of international law, um, and, and the competence of its students mm -hmm. to practice in that area around the world. And there's got to be a lot of good reasons for that. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about the fact pattern, the 20-page single-spaced fact pattern that's so dense. Yeah. It sounds intimidating at the outset. What's in that 20 pages? Well, uh, it's intimidating because it's complicated. And you know yourself when you first start reading, looking at legal problems, there are so many facts. It's, it's just a real challenge to figure out what's important, what's not important, and, and to spot the issues. Um, as I mentioned, it, it's usually about 20 pages long, and it's usually designed to raise four distinct issues and then sub-issues 
under, uh, under each of those. And of course, as judges, we're looking to, it's kind of like a checklist to see, did the student catch all these issues and how did they handle them? And, how, and, and, and they get a lot of questioning. I and, wanted to ask you about it. Yeah, you, I asked a lot so of questions. You're a hot court guy. Well, I, I want to see if they can, you know, think, think it through, you know, when they're asked a question. Plus, it's interesting to ask the questions. You, you know, it's a, it really is a give and take. Um, and this, this year, the, the main issues were, it was basically a story about a regional area, and, that, and they use these really complicated names, so you have to master them. But there were two countries in particular, and they, they, are, they had a long coastline, and one country had adopted a, uh, became the People's Republic of, of X and had adopted a, 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 a political system that was different than the rest of the countries. <laughs> and then he had this other country that had a big navy and it was, had a history of sort of protecting the, the commerce, uh, ocean commerce around. And the, the People's Republic uh, uh, decided that they wanted to control their territorial waters and so they, uh, they passed a local statute saying you can't come in our territorial waters unless we, pr we permit you Ooh, to. Ooh, this sounds like the South China Sea. And the, ba the, the big line. Navy <laughs> sent an autonomous <laughs> submersible into the, oh this, which they say strayed into the, oh was gathering uh, acoustic and uh, you know, communication information. These are really relevant problems. Yeah, right yeah, and, and, and the People's Republic grabbed that, that, that submersible and took it. And so that was one of the big issues. Can they do that? And under what you know, it was an act of war and things like that. And then the People's Republic developed a nuclear submarine that was armed with nuclear missiles and put it to sea. And then there was a UN resolution authorizing the big country to uh, they confront and uh, neutralize the, I think it was called the I IBRA, was the submarine. And uh, they did that, and then on the way they sank a, uh, a commercial, a, a privately owned ship, like a military contractor what, ship. This is bristling with issues. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it, it was, it's pretty formidable. Uh, is the fact pattern the same all over the world? These are the yes. fact patterns just from China? No, no, it's exactly the same problem for all the 90 countries. And so that's what makes the competition interesting. Oh, it's, yeah. yeah. So do you study up on the fact pattern beforehand? Yeah, do you, yeah. You've done your own thinking about it. Yeah, I've learned a lot of international law over yeah. eight years. Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. yeah, well, they, they give you a list of the materials, but to read through all those would be a pretty formidable thing. And, and then just toward the, the uh, competition, they gave us uh, what they call a, I forget, it's a, it's a judge's brief, it's a summary. And then what I do is I summarize that, and I use that as a checklist. And, and between that and, and grading 15 briefs, I, I get up to speed uh, for... Are, are there hard answers? I mean, for example, is there a yes or no on whether one country is entitled to seize the submersible well, or the other? Well, these are students, right? Yeah. So uh, uh, they say, well, you know, th th what happened was is that there was this private cargo vessel was supposed to be providing supplies to the submarine, which was on the high seas. <coughs> and so the country that, that was armed with a UN resolution to stop the submarine sunk the private vessel. It didn't respond to a couple of radio calls, so they launched 15 cruise missiles at it. <laughs> And sunk it and killed a this bunch of civilians. It's going to happen on the front page any day. Yeah, yeah. So, and and you know, one side is saying, yeah, that's fine. You know, they had the they had the UN. You know, you know, would that happen in real life? <laughs> and then they and Maybe. then they, and then they 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 located the submarine finally and they fired torpedoes at it. Uh, whoever wrote the, the or the man who wrote it didn't wasn't a naval officer certainly. <laughs> they fired torpedoes at this nuclear-powered submarine and forced it to the surface and then they took it and they dismantled it and they repatriated the crew. This is a great movie. Yeah, Charlie. yeah, it, it's a very, I mean, there, and every year it's something like that, it's only really with, interesting. A, with a different subject matter. And so it's very challenging for the students. Yeah, but I, I guess uh, you can really get excited about this because it is so now in, in yes. its own way. Yes. And because it, you know, it reaches out to global events that either have happened, some similar event has happened or mm -hmm. could happen, uh, and it's a kind of a mirror image of, of um, geopolitics in the world we live in. Yeah. What, one of the things that strikes me is that um, is there, is there, you know, they're young people and they don't have a lot of world experience, so they'll say, yeah, it was okay to sink that cargo vessel because, it, because we had to get to the submarine, and I thought, gee, you know, that probably they should have just admitted that that was a mistake and offered to pay for it, 
rather than try to defend that because the more you defend an impossible position, you, you lose credibility, right? Sure. <laughs> we know that from the daily newspaper. Yeah, and so, and, uh, so in the training we do the last day, I, 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 was, I talked to the students about you, that. You pointed out to, from the bench, you say, you know, that's nice that you, you said that was fine to sink that ship, but uh, you, what you might have said is, uh, we're sorry and we'll pay for it. Uh, what, do you tell them, you know, your uh, view of it? it well, I, I did because I was no, not going to serve as a judge in the rest of the competition. The people who serve as a judge are, are admonished not to discuss, t um, you know, good, good or bad arguments on those particular facts because otherwise it would be given an unfair advantage. But I, I wasn't going to continue to uh, participate, so I, I did comment on things yeah, like that. that's very valuable. Are these taped? What the, oh, the competition? The arguments, uh, the you comments know, from the bench. Usually, uh, well, usually they tape. Uh, I think the the semifinals and the finals. This year they just taped the semifinals. I, I don't know what they do with those. I've never seen one. Boy, I I give a lot to be there and tape this. This ought to be really exciting. It is interesting, interesting. yeah. yeah. And, and, and and the thing is, that all it's just like real life. All the judges are different. You know, they all ask questions that are totally different from one another. They come from different cultures and points of view. And you know. part of the training that I did, I said, you know, you're gonna, that's what you're going to meet in real life. There's all different kinds of judges and, and uh, your ability to... Especially in international law, because yeah. you could be anywhere when this kind of... Exactly. You, get a, you might have a panel with a judge from Russia and Armenia and, you know, Australia. Yeah. Well, I think it's great that it happens because it also teaches people, sort of like the... Um, um, the uh, the organization down in uh, Waikiki, where the DOD here invites mm -hmm. uh, um, a U.S. Um, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember the yeah. name right now. Uh, U.S. something um, invites uh, military officers and also uh, civilian officials come to Hawaii and engage with each other. And so mm -hmm. that's really what you're doing. You're engaging these people with with uh, others. Um, who may be in the play later, yeah. and they it, they will benefit by this by just understanding it. It's better not not to try to avoid criticism if you sunk the guy's ship. Mm -hmm. That there there are better ways. These, these are lessons that are huge lessons. Yes. So let's look at your pictures. Okay. Uh, what do we got here? I, I think about twenty four. Uh, well, they're a little out of order. This this is the the closing ceremonies, and this is a picture of all. <coughs> All of the volunteer students, many students volunteered to help uh, with, the, with the competition. And at the end, professors, you traditionally give them each a red rose. <laughs> it's very, I, I, what I do is I take a couple of boxes of macadamia nut candy and, and give it to the student volunteers every year. Next. Oh, oh this is the final dinner. Uh, you, you cannot uh, engage in conversations with the students until the end of the competition and that, that night they have a big dinner and, you, and they're all sitting at different tables and, and, and so you have the opportunity to go speak with them and they do, they come up to you and they say, you know, you were my judge and you know, did I, can you give me advice about my presentation and so you have really, really nice, and they all want to photograph and I did too, so we had lots of, that's where these photographs that's came great. from. Yeah. That's another picture of the dinner. Uh, some of the s sponsoring law firms also come so they have an opportunity to meet. Next. Uh, that, that's, this is a group of students. The, the, the gentleman on the, my left uh, is uh, from Finland. He's a good friend of mine. And he's a, for, a former law professor at the University of Lapland in Finland. And he now is an international lawyer in Europe doing mergers and acquisitions. Mm. He comes every year. This. Um, the, you see the, the shorter young woman in the front? Yes. She was very good. Yes. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that team uh, scores very high in Washington. Now, this is, this is at, uh, in one of the rooms where we actually had a competition. So we have three of our judges. I, I was serving as the president of the court. And these are the two teams collectively. Uh, because at the end of the competition, I always like to ask them all to come up for a photograph, and they like that too, and it kind of is a nice way to end the competition. I can't tell you which team is which, but, they're, but it gives you an idea of what they look like. Mm -hmm. This is the judge's uh, room. Uh, the gentleman seated with a down jacket there is Professor Zhu. I have some better pictures of him later. It just shows you where the judges hang out.
and uh, we have lunch, and it's, it's rather nice. This is a room at Renman University in the law school. It's a very prestigious school, isn't it? Yes. They call it the party school, and I guess that means that the graduates who do well uh, work in high positions in the government eventually oh, and so okay. on. I, I'm not sure exactly. This is, this is, these are pictures of the campus. Um, I walked around one day with a couple of other folks, and, and we, this is a big um, athletic center of some sort. You can see it, it looks like winter, doesn't it? It was, it it was, it was cold there. Sparse. Yeah. yeah. Next. We can go through these fairly rapidly. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, some sort of big rock with some Chinese characters on it. This is the where the final uh, competition takes place. Inside there is a huge uh, amphitheater, which I, which you saw in the first slide with the students. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the library uh, for the uh, Renmin University. It's a huge place. Oh, this is funny. I was looking at the books, and it, you see. Uh, President Trump's book is there, and if you look up in the right-hand corner, that's President Xi's. <laughs> a little higher up. <laughs> I thought it was an interesting <laughs> juxtaposition. <laughs> There's a message there. Yeah, this is this. This was the campus bookstore, which I was very interested to go see. And this is the front of the law school. It was, it was, uh, we had to negotiate those steps every day, which for an older fellow is becoming a challenge. Oh, a, a friend took us uh, down. Uh, downtown for a really good Chinese meal one night. Oh, go, you can go back to that for a second, or keep going. There's some more of it. Uh, you see that that uh, huge building at the end? That's a recreation of one of the ancient nine gates of Beijing, the inner city of Beijing. Uh -huh. oh, That's yeah. what it looked like yeah. ar around the time of the Boxer Rebellion. Oh, wow. And it's very impressive. Can you imagine a city with nine of those things yeah, going on yeah. in the Forbidden City in the center yeah. of it? There's a better picture of it. Isn't that impressive? Well, that's a recreated gate. Apparently it's rebuilt. And this is uh, my friend from Finland and the, the son of, of uh, uh, my uh, friend from, from the University of International Relations. That's where I taught a summer school. Uh, Xi Jinping is her, is her name. Th oh, this is just at the airport when I left. I thought, I looked at the... See, they go everywhere from Beijing uh, Airport, Abu Dhabi, Singapore, Addis Ababa, you name it. Give, it gives you the. Uh, this is coming home. The last Hawaii appeared under the over the wing. Oh, it always feels good to come back. <laughs> anyway, so you've been doing this a long time, and you've been doing other projects in China, other visits in yes. China, and and other places in mm -hmm. Asia. And I and I want to ask you one final question, Jacqueline. Mm, okay. <clears throat> it's like a, it's a Passover question. Why was <laughs> this trip different from all the others? What, where, where are you on the dynamic? What did you, what did you learn this time? What did you observe this time that was different than anything you saw before? Oh boy, um, I, I, you know, each each time I've gone there, it's been an extraordinary experience. Uh, people are a bit different. New people come and go. Is who serve as judges, so it's always you're, me, you're meeting different people. Uh, I don't. I don't think it was much different, except for that. Um, You're going to keep on doing it. Yes. Why? Oh, it's very stimulating and very interesting. Intellectually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, and personally, be because of the people you meet and the relationships that you establish. I've met some. I've met some really, really nice people in, in China. People are very friendly in China. You know. Uh, very. I'm, I'm struck by that. Yeah. I, I've always had a nice time. We used to, Russell Liu, our friend, he used to take me down to the area where the guitar shops are. And we used to go into the guitar store. They make these beautiful guitars in, in China and play the guitar and talk to the guy. And, and then we'd go into the Chinese traditional in, instrument shop and the lady would play for us. It was a lot of really interesting experiences. Yeah. And, and going there with the Jessup is, uh, you know, exposes that. Gives you a good you that opportunity. good cause for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you're, 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 you've got the tiger by the tail in the sense that this is, in many ways, the future. Mm -hmm. It's the future for many countries, but certainly the future for China. Mm -hmm. To be able to deal in the geopolitical and the diplomatic sphere, to deal on international law, to have its graduates, Akamai, in these areas. Um, you know, if you're going to do one belt, one road, mm -hmm. if you're going to you know, try to make uh, influence in, uh, in Africa, South America, and Europe now, 
um, you have to be Akamai about international relations. Mm -hmm. This is what they're teaching. This is what you're teaching. Them. Yeah, the students will never forget this experience. Yeah. And, they, and if they meet people around the world who participate in Jessup, it's, it's like, a, uh, you know, a, like a fraternity or sorority experience, great. which is great. It builds international understanding. Yes, that's the point. Thank you so much, Shackley Riffero. Great to have <laughs> you on pleasure. the show. My pleasure. Good to see you. And see hang you again out. soon. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jay. <laughs>